the question has to do with drawing and you um, kind of uh, phrased it as the step scissor of painting, which I find like beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and in our show, we are actually in an exceptional case because we're showing both your like large scale drawings, so almost like three meter tall, mm -hmm. and the more sketchbook size, which are now kind of um, shown in this kind of um, placard with uh, mounds, um, mm -hmm. kind of installation situation. And they're all of them done with graphite and ballpoint pen. Um, and I was about to, I was thinking of just kind of reading out loud uh, what Kathleen Hanna, which is the lead singer of La Tigre and uh, Bikini Kill, uh, nicely put when she came to your studio and describes the way in which the drawings are um, kind of done. Um, it's my Italian accent, so I am sorry. <laughs> oh no, it adds, it adds flavor. <laughs> so um, Marlene's studio was wallpapered with the craziest fucking drawings I've ever seen. It looked like a coked up teenage girl decided to take the big pen drawings off her Traper Keeper. You will have to tell us what a Traper Keeper is and magnifying them a thousand times. They read like sexed up religious paintings advertising a new cult I desperately wanted to join. They were big as billboards, obsessive and completely unapologetic. So the question is about drawing. Like what made you to move from, you know, um, the text paintings into um, this medium? Uh... Well, I talked a little bit earlier about the switch from text painting to doing mm -hmm. the murder girls. Um, let me just back up for a second and say, you know, even though I studied design in Basel, I was in a program that was basically a program that was designed to mirror or mimic uh, the Bauhaus. Mm -hmm. And um, part of their curriculum was, part of their attitude was, you can't do anything in the visual arts unless you learn to draw. You can't design type, you can't make tapestries, you can't do ceramics, you can't make graphic design, you can't do anything unless you've gone through the process of uh, learning what drawing means. Mm -hmm. So even though I was doing all the other classes I was supposed to do, we had four hour drawing studios, depending on what year it was, four to five days a week. Wow. And we went to school six days a week. <clears throat> um, and I mean, that was like really academic drawing. And it was very structural drawing. It wasn't like American when it's taught in America. It's all about feeling. <laughs> this was about like, you have to process how, how this cup is built. And we want to see all the like, you know, different ovals at different perspectives. And you should be able to imagine all of that as you look at that cup. So this just went on. I did that for five years. Um, I left Basel and was like, I'm never drawing again, ever. <laughs> that I'm done. I am done. And, um, so I never had any, uh, this is all just to say, I never had any plans to draw. I never mm -hmm. had any plans to do figurative work. In fact, if you had told me a year before I did started the murder girls that I would be doing figurative drawings, I would have told you you were out of your mind. <laughs> um, so that work came from the Murder Girls. When I started the Mur Murder Girls, I had a really hard time figuring out how to represent them. I originally uh, took some headshots I had gotten of a couple of girls, well actually of Merlene Olive, I guess, and um, I did a little series of iron-on portraits where I just copied her portrait onto this material I was using for the, mm -hmm. for the text paintings. 
and I ironed it onto a canvas and was like, okay, I'm done. And then I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? That looks like a Warhol wannabe. That's like, <laughs> it's like, this is so not about, this is about reproduction. This is about mechanical reproduction. Mm -hmm. This is about um, the media. This is about anything. It's not about these girls. Mm -hmm. And so I finally was like, actually what happened was, and this is important because it actually changed the direction of my artwork. I had to go home to Kentucky. I went to my mother's house and she was like, you have to clean out the front hall closet. There's a bunch of stuff in there that's yours and you have to get it out of there. So I started going through all the stuff in this closet and I came across this drawing I had done of myself when I was 17. And it was totally, this was pre basel time. Mm -hmm. So it was totally like, and it was like, I tried to make my hair really pretty. <laughs> you know, it was really, it's horrible. But, um, but I was like, oh my God, that's the way I have to represent these girls. Like, I have to use that genre of drawing that teenage girls fall back on when they think they're going to make a pretty portrait. And that is because that's how these girls would have represented themselves. Mm -hmm. So then I started to draw again. Um, <laughs> and that's where the drawing came from. So there was not a big, long debate in my mind about choosing drawing. It mm -hmm. totally came out as like the form appropriate for what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. But that's all to say, now I'm in it. Um, and, you know, the, first of all, trapper keepers are notebooks. Mm. They're like high school okay. notebooks. Good to know. <laughs> um, anyway, but so now I'm into drawing. Now I think about drawing a lot and I keep thinking like, why can I not stop? Um, you know, everybody's like, why don't you paint those pictures? It would be so much quicker. <laughs> and I'm just like, I can't, I can't. It ruins the conversation. It takes them into a whole nother history, mm -hmm. a whole nother context. And mm -hmm. um, drawing is about ideas, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to read a little bit that I said about drawing. Mm -hmm. um, there's been centuries long the notion of drawing as a secondary art form ordinary, low, weak the stepsister of art history traditionally drawing was the preparatory stage the thinking about the masterpiece the ideas but not the masterpiece not the master's choice it is also considered so easy and natural, everyone could do it, even children. People think of drawing as easy, spontaneous, liberating, joyful. These drawings, especially the big ones, are not that. They take forever to draw. Um, when Art Forum emailed me for some fact checking, they asked me, do the drawings take hundreds of hours? I actually did a calculation and emailed them back. And I said, actually, it takes thousands of hours. It takes a really long time, but I'm really invested in the idea of drawing because now after many years of thinking about it because of its marginality. Obviously, I enjoy it, or I wouldn't do it, but it does take a lot of willpower. In reaction to that, I'm constantly asked, as I just mentioned, why do you not paint? Why do you not make them colorful? 
with painting, the conversation is about a very specific and rarefied history. It is a history that represents the male painters. Even though there are many great female painters, especially now, pushing the boundaries, but it's still that conversation. Drawing has always been the place where the idea happens, but not the masterpiece. I like the fact that drawing is a place where you can indulge in concepts and thoughts. It's a more contemplative place than painting. Also, you are not tricked or seduced into the beauty of drawings in the way that you're beguiled with the glamour of painting. In drawing, I personally find a really rich territory of creation. I do understand, however, the complexity of dealing with this medium. Drawings are very difficult to take care of. They are delicate. Um, you know, there are some galleries that just even refuse to deal with works on paper. Drawings are a result of the moment we live in. The fact that I sent these small pieces in the middle of the pandemic is a testament to that. And I might say these are the first small drawings I've done. Um, I don't, I'm not one of those artists who does little sketches and then makes big drawings. I just start on the big one. Um, but back to the pandemic. Though the world uh, was falling apart around me, when you guys called and we were talking about the show, um, there was a part of me that said it was important to keep working. Um, especially when we talked about the fact it wasn't possible to ship the big, big drawings. Um, I just felt it was important to do something rather than nothing, especially in this uncertain time. Um, even if it's not linear, these drawings describe the trauma of the moment. Um, I also feel very good about the fact these drawings are a result of the framework of this pandemic. They are not just on the wall. The posts, the placards function as a de demonstrative support in an installation. Their reduced sizes and their spatial presence still speak to a kind of monumental attitude. By their placement in mounds of earth on placards, reminiscent of demonstrations, they become interventionist and immersive. Um, sometimes I think maybe my drawings start to locate themselves in a more sculptural conversation, uh, more so than a painting conversation, even though they are two-dimensional works. Um, I feel like the placards are a direct outgrowth from an installation I did in Buffalo a year ago. Um, there, I was really able to explore the idea of the drawing becoming part of the space. The big drawings were all um, exhibited on freestanding walls within a space. Um, and I have to say, I can't, speaking of those placards as reminiscent of um, demonstration signs that people carry, I can't ignore the fact that living in the US for the past four years has been hell, and it doesn't seem like that guy is going away. Um, anyway, it has been hell, and the amount of demonstration speaking out that has been required is ever present and you feel it makes no difference. Uh, anyway, I'm just saying that this idea of people taking to the streets is very important. This constant putting your voice out there has totally influenced the work that you guys have in your gallery. I know we call them signposts, but more than signposts, um, more than being influenced by a signpost. I'm, I actually was much more influenced by seeing the crowds of people constantly speaking out. 